English with Mr. C. Oh, hey, it's Mr. C. I'm back. San Antonio, Texas, newcomers class. We are going to start lesson four today. We did lesson three. We learned how to put sentences together, subject and predicate. We learned some new parts of speech like adjectives and adverbs, articles, A, N, and D. Now we're going to move on to lesson four. We're still going to stay in verb to be today. We've got a lot of things to cover with verb to be. I wanted to cover prepositions and conjunctions in this lesson, but we got so much stuff to practice for just for verb to be that we're going to do that in lesson five. So lesson four today is going to be about verb to be. We're going to learn how ing and the verb to be go together, two verbs. We're going to learn s verbs. We're going to learn a new verb after verbs to be. We have the verb feel. We're going to learn how to put s on the end of feel, ing on the end of feel, and past tense of feel. Oh, there it is right there. So we're going to practice how to do contractions with apostrophe and not take out the letter, put apostrophe where it was. We've got several things to go over. Let's go ahead and do it right now. Ready? Lesson four. Let's go. Okay, so now we are going to work on new sentences, and we're going to learn how to punctuate our sentences. Now that we can make several words together in one sentence, we always need to remember the basic rules of writing a sentence. What are they? Punctuation. So look, we have capital letters when we start a sentence. There's a big A and a little a. Let's get closer. Little a and big A. When you start a sentence, always use capital first. Here's a sentence right here. Capital is big letters, and we have a capital C to start that sentence. Also, we use a period at the end of every sentence. The end. That's a big period there, but usually periods look like this. A little dot, a little dot over here, and where's the period on this end? There's a dot. So a period is a, usually the, the, what goes to the end of a sentence, and commas separate phrases, words, and names. So look, we have a comma here, and there's only one comma in this sentence. This is a group of things, so commas separate words or phrases or names. So here's a big comma over there. Question marks end questions. End means to finish a sentence. In this case, a question, when you finish a question, put a question mark. Question mark would go at the end, right? So apostrophes make contractions. They're also used for possessive apostrophe S. If you say it's Mr. C's classroom, you would say apostrophe S. But we often use apostrophes for contractions. Now let's go over here to contractions. Contractions, see? Apostrophe, there's a big giant extra, extra oversized apostrophe. Contractions. Now let's, let's start with simple contractions first. We have the verb to be, which we studied in the last lesson. Now when we combine pronouns and verb to be, we're gonna have a contraction with an apostrophe. Look here, you're gonna say I am, you take away the A, put an apostrophe where the A was, and you have I'm, you put it together to have I'm. Here you have you are, take, take out the A, put an apostrophe where the A was, put it together and say your. Here we have we are, take out the A, put an apostrophe, we're. They are, take out the A, there. She is, take out the I, she's. So there are no contractions with past when we're using pronouns and verb, verb to be together. We wouldn't put pronouns with was or were, not with pronouns. So look at a different kind of contraction with not. We haven't talked about not yet. Not is a little bit like no, but we use it with verbs, not. Let's try this. Uh, contractions with not and verbs to be in this case so you can say is and not take out the take out the the O put an apostrophe where the O was isn't was not take out the O see the O take out the O put apostrophe wasn't put it together are not take out the O aren't were not take out the O put it together but you can't say a contraction of verb to be with am. You can't say amant. That's the one that does not work. 
Now we understand pronouns and verb to be and adjectives, and we know we can make a three word sentence. So let's look at it one more time and then we're gonna learn some new things about making questions today. Pronouns, subjective pronouns, begin a phrase, and then we can go on to verbs to be and use any one of the verbs to be with an adjective. I feel good, I feel bad, she was hurt, we were healthy. One, two, three words make a sentence. Now, what we're gonna learn today is that when you take the verb to be and make it the first word, you can make a question. So come over here. So look, we have pronoun, verb, adjectives. That is the same as this. So let's do it here on this board. So remember, pronoun, subjective pronoun comes first. And look at all these pictures we have of ways people feel or ways you can describe people. Happy, shocked, cold, confident, you feel good, horrified, scared, arrogant. I don't like this or that. So when we ask a question, it's a question mark. When we say a sentence, it's a period. So let's practice that. So we have pronoun, verb, adjective. Okay, let's do the first sentence. We always wanna start with I, talk about ourselves. So say, I am, uh, let's say, I am happy. I am happy. Now if we wanna make a question, we're gonna use am first. So move I out of here, take the little a. See, that has a little a, it can't start a sentence with small a. So say, am I happy? Question mark. Am I happy? Yes, I'm happy. Am I? When you start with the verb to be, capitalize it and put the pronoun second. Adjective still stays in the same position, but now it is a question. If it was not a question, we put a period. I am happy. I am happy, period. Let's change it to he and she. Remember, you can't say am with he or she. So let's say he is happy. That's a sentence. He is happy, period. But let's make it a question now. Capital I S. And then we're going to use little he, little h, because it's not the first word of the sentence. And because we start with verb to be, we take out the period, we're going to put a question mark. Question mark. Is he happy? Okay, let's switch it out now to say they. They is the first word. Now, when we say they, we have to say are. You can't say they is, they are happy. Now that is not, not a question. That is a sentence, they are happy. Now you know now we can make it a question. Change the first word to are, second word is they. We have to have a capital A though, it's the first word. Capital A and little t for they. And now it's not a period for sentence anymore. It's a question, are they happy? Let's do it with everyone. So everyone, and let's say past tense now. Past tense, everyone was happy. That's a statement, a sentence, everyone was. Now we wanna make a question. Take away the capital E, move it. Let's do a capital W for was, and say, was everyone happy? Was everyone? Capital W starts the sentence. Question mark ends a question. Okay, so let's say he was not cold. So we want to make a contraction. We're going to take out one of the letters here, the O, and we're going to turn that into an apostrophe. And when we do that, it will look like this. When the O is gone, it looks like this with an apostrophe where it was. He wasn't cold. That's not a question. We move around was with the, with the contraction of not and put the pronoun second. You start with verb to be. You make a question. Wasn't he cold? All right, this is when we're going to learn some cool new things. We're going to learn S verbs and we're going to learn ING with a verb to be. We're going to use feel. Feel is the first verb that you can change places with the verb to be. Let's take a look. 
So let's remember that we can say, a girl was beautiful. We can also say, the, the girl was beautiful. She is girl. But we're gonna, we're gonna practice using our articles. Remember articles? A, an, and the. You can't say an girl. You can say an elegant girl if you put an adjective. But the girl or a girl was beautiful. Or if we say, of course, present tense is beautiful. And we need to put a period on the end of that sentence. The only thing is that the B, the B would not be capitalized. It would be a small B. The girl is beautiful. A girl is beautiful. Let's change, change from beautiful to cold. The girl is cold. Question, I mean, not, that's a period, sentence. So now let's, let's, instead of using verb to be, these are all verbs to be, let's change it. We're gonna use, instead of is, we'll use feel. But with girl, it's a he or a she, he, it is singular. So you have to use the S form. Take away feel, that's for, that is for they or we or I. But with he or she, you say, she, the girl feels cold, period. Feels, it's an S because it's a she, it's, it's singular. Now notice, there's an S on the verb. That's the first time we've seen an S verb, except that really we've already done a, a couple of S verbs. We did was and we did is. Is and was are S verbs. They end with S. The last letter is S. So now our first verb that's not a verb to be is feels. Remember, we were talking before how verbs to be talk about how we feel, how we are, but then you can also use feel, feels, and felt. Now let's get in close. See, for feel, you say I, you, we, they. I feel, you feel, we feel, they feel. No S. And for feels, he, she, it, or everyone, you say feels, you have to put an S, it's singular. You would also do that for verbs like want and need. You say they want, we want, I want, but with the he, she, it, you say she wants, he wants. And look at this, it's past tense. Past tense of feel is irregular. It's not field, you don't put ED on feel, it's irregular, spelled this way. She felt happy yesterday, past tense. So back to feel, let's move, move the adjective over. And now let's say, and we have to bring back ver the verb to be once again. So let's say feeling, but you can't say she feeling, you have to say verb to be. So let's say is. We have verbs to be, it's ing. Go back over here to our poster again. Verbs to be, add ing with the next verb. Let's read the poster, it's very helpful. So this, these are present tense verbs that have ing on the end. Walking, talking, saying. You add ing, there's no, there's no hyphen when you spell it out. It'll look like this with no hyphen. Feeling, all together. When we say feel with ing, take off the s. Whenever we say ing, we have verb to be. You can say, the girl was feeling cold, or today, she is feeling cold. And that's a period on the end. If you wanna make a question, switch it around. You say is, is the girl feeling cold? And then that becomes a question, question mark. Is the girl feeling cold? Is the girl feeling cold? And we can add ing to other verbs. You can say going, doing, seeing, helping. And whenever you do that, you must always use a, a verb to be. I am going, he was, doing his homework. She is seeing a movie with her friend. She is helping her friend. You have to have verb to be with ing on the verb. Now we can also use adverbs in our sentence. We can say she is so beautiful. 
She is very beautiful. The girl is extremely smart, intelligent. He is really nice. He is really helpful. All right, what do you think? That was a lot of stuff, wasn't it? Lots to cover. Probably a good idea to, to watch this lesson over and over again just to remember all the different little things you have to do. When you're making a short sentence with contractions or with singular, he, she, it, you put an S on the verb. And with verb to be, you put ing. Lots of things that we have to practice. And we learn some more adverbs, more adjectives. Let's keep expanding our, our parts of speech and our ability to make longer sentences. And now, I promise, next lesson we will make long sentences with conjunctions and prepositions. That's how we really get to have some big sentences. Are you ready? English with Mr. C.